What's good, Rizzle fam? It's your boy, Big Man. Tupac Shakur, also known as Tupac, was one of the most iconic figures in hip-hop history. With his insightful lyrics, raw emotion, and rebellious spirit, he captured the hearts and minds of millions of fans around the world. However, his life was tragically cut short on September 13th, 1996, when he was gunned down in Las Vegas, Nevada. While the official story is that he was the victim of a drive-by sh**, there are many conspiracy theories that suggest that there is more to the story than meets the eye. We'll explore the events leading up to Tupac's death, the various conspiracy theories that have been put forth, and try to uncover the truth behind one of the most enduring mysteries in music history. What happened before the incident? So, what exactly led to Tupac's mysterious death, and what happened on the night before Tupac went into the hospital? On the night of September 7, 1996, Tupac attended the Mike Tyson and Bruce Shelton boxing match at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. After the fight, Tupac and his entourage got into a physical altercation with a Crips gang member named Orlando Anderson in the lobby of the MGM Grand. The incident was captured on video by surveillance cameras, and Tupac and his associates were later interviewed by the police. The following night, Tupac attended a party hosted by Death Row Records, founder Suge Knight, at the Club 662 in Las Vegas. As they were leaving the club, Tupac and Suge Knight were driving in a BMW with Suge Knight behind the wheel and Pac was in the passenger seat. At around 11.15 p.m., a white Cadillac pulled up alongside their car and opened fire, hitting Tupac four times. Suge Knight was also injured in the shoot suffering a minor head wound from a bullet fragment. Tupac was taken to the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, where he underwent surgery and was put on life support. However, he was pronounced dead on September 13, 1996, just six days after the shooting. After the shooting, Suge Knight drove the BMW to a nearby hotel, where he flagged down a police officer for help. The officer called for an ambulance, which arrived at the scene shortly after. However, instead of waiting for the ambulance, Suge decided to drive Tupac to the hospital himself, reportedly because he didn't want to wait for medical assistance to arrive. During the drive to the hospital, Suge Knight ran a number of red lights and was pulled over by the police at one point. However, when the police realized that Tupac was in the car, they allowed Suge to continue driving to the hospital. Once they arrived to the hospital, Tupac was rushed into surgery where doctors were attempting to save his life. And as we've already mentioned, six days after Tupac was shot, he was pronounced dead. However, a couple of things that happened at the hospital as well as after Tupac was already, quote, dead, don't add up to this very day. Starting from the very fact that the police never truly concluded the case of Tupac's assassination. Biggie behind it? After the shooting of Tupac, the police launched an investigation to find the people responsible for the attack. However, during numerous interviews with witnesses and reviewing surveillance footage from the area, they weren't able to identify any suspects or make any arrests. One theory is why the police were able to find the perpetrators is that the witnesses were either afraid to come forward or were uncooperative with the investigation. This may have been due to the fear of retaliation from the shooters or their associates, or a reluctance to get involved in a high-profile case altogether. Another theory is that the investigation may have been hindered by corruption within the Las Vegas Police Department or by the involvement of gang members within the department. This theory is supported by allegations that some members of the Las Vegas Police Department had ties to the Death Row Records label, which was founded by Suge Knight and was closely associated with Tupac. Despite numerous investigations and inquiries over the years, the case remains officially unsolved, with no arrests or charges ever made in connection with Tupac's death. This led to numerous conspiracy theories and speculation about who was really responsible for the sh** and why they were never brought to justice. The very fact that the police can't solve this mystery is what's fueling a lot of these controversial theories that keep popping up like the famous idea that Tupac might still be alive. These theories have been fueled by a number of supposed sightings of the rapper over the years following his death, as well as various clues and hints in his music and lyrics that some believe suggests he faked his own death. Another theory suggests that Tupac is living in hiding in the United States, and that he faked his own death in order to escape the pressures of fame and the constant attention of the media and the public. These theories have been widely dismissed by law enforcement officials and experts who point out that there's no concrete evidence to support him, and that it's highly unlikely that someone as famous as Pac could successfully fake their own death and still remain in hiding for so long. However, some supporter of these theories point to comments made by Shrug Knight in the day is following Tupac sh as evidence that the rapper may still be alive. In an interview with the Los Angeles radio station just one day before Tupac's death, Knight suggested that the rapper was doing great and would be released from the hospital soon. <laughs> he was conscious on the way to the hospital, he was conscious in the ambulance, he was conscious after, uh, after they did the surgery. They left me. We was in the, you know, we was going in there. We was on the thing, it was getting there. I was like, Pocky, we the last one left. When we talking, this is how we talking. He said, I'm straight. 
I love you, homie. I'm gonna be straight. I love you too. Ooh, ooh. That's 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 what it was. Some have interpreted this comment as a hint that Pac was never actually killed and that Knight was part of a conspiracy to fake his death and help him escape. However, it's worth noting that Knight has since denied any involvement in such a conspiracy, and there's no concrete evidence to support this theory. In another interview that Suge Knight did, he left out an open ending, or in other words, he left the chance to Tupac still be in live and play. So people always want to know, is Pac dead, is Pac alive? I'm the wrong motherfucker to ask. But I tell you this, if you try to find a person who cremated Tupac. After he supposed cremated Tupac, he retired and vanished into the sun, into the sunset, into the darkness. After, you know, after if you really look at it, could Pac done all those songs? Sort of mathematically impossible. Some people rushed to make fun of the interview with saying, Tupac is probably holding the camera. But then there were other who pointed out to the fact that Tupac had resources and the power necessary to actually pull strings that everything was possible for him. People that was around Suge tell a different story. I'm not saying that he is lying, but somebody is. There was plenty of people in the East helping Pac. Tretch, Outlaw, mad people from NY. Speaking of people and speaking of Tretch, he actually played quite an important role when it comes to all the theories that emerged, claiming that Pac might actually still be alive. One of the most popular theories is that Tupac's living in Cuba, where he supposedly fled after his shooting. Supporters of this theory point to alleged sightings of the rapper in Cuba, as well as reports of him being spotted in other countries like New Zealand and Somalia. Tredge, whose real name is Anthony Chris, is an American rapper and actor who's a member of the hip-hop group Naughty by Nature. He's a close friend of Pac, and the two had a connection that went a bit deeper than just music. After Pac's death, Tretch was not directly implicated in any of the conspiracy theories that came about, but he did speak about the circumstances surrounding Tupac's death and expressed his own doubts about the official story. In interviews and on social media, Tretch was suggesting that there was more to Tupac's death than what was reported in the media and authorities. He was also criticized by other artists and individuals who he believes may have played a role in Tupac's death or in the subsequent cover-up. On one Vlad TV interview that Tretch did, he commented on a famous video where he told one of his interviewers that he last saw Tupac in Cuba. One last question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> You know, Tupac did study Machiavelli, and Machiavelli was someone that did fake his own death. Yeah, Pac was a jack of all trades. He could pull off a lot of things. I mean, I'm loyal. If I know anything, won't nobody else know. If he wanted to be seen, or if he wanted people not to think he was here, I'm rolling with him in whatever he wanted to do. Now, Suge Knight's son was also quite involved in the more recent so-called evidence that circled around the internet Pac's existence. Suge Knight Jr. was making claims on social media and in interviews that Tupac is still alive, and he has proof of him being in Malaysia. He's posted photos of individuals who keeps claiming that Tupac's in disguise, in, even in these posted videos of someone who he's claiming that Tupac's speaking on these phones. But as it turns out, it was nothing more than marketing trick as a way to attract a broad audience to watch his show. Do you believe he's you just have to tune into the show for my answer. Oh, come on. I'm telling you, you just have to tune into the show for my answer. Like, I don't want to ruin it. It's an important message. However, these claims have been widely criticized and dismissed by many, including Tupac's close friends and family members. As you already know, there's no concrete evidence to support the theory that Tupac is still alive, and many experts and investigators have thoroughly examined the circumstances surrounding his death and have found no evidence for foul play or cover-up. At the end of the day, one thing's for sure, Pac's legacy continues to live on regardless if the conspiracy theories surrounding this past and turn out to be true or not one day. People on the internet are convinced that all the stories that we hear about Tupac are probably going to stick around for a long, long time. Tupac's still the most talked about rapper 20 years after death. I'm 38 and I'm definitely sure that my grand grandkids will hear about Tupac and still listening to his music because he'll forever be talked about and live on as a legend he is. Love you, Pac. Thanks so much for watching to the very end. If you like this video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe to our channel. And as always, remember to keep it R-I-Double-Z-L-E-Rizzle.